Is everyone sitting at home looking for more nightmare fuel to make it hard to go to sleep at night? Do you want some creatures stirring around in your mind that are much more deadly and larger than most of the beasts we have walking around today? Did you know that Australia used to have even more dangerous animals on it? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you are in the right place. This is Life's Biggest Questions, and here we like to take some of the most outlandish ideas and ask the world what it might look like if they were real. I mean, who hasn't played this game with their friends? This is a game as old as time. Well, I'm your host, host Che Dorena, and on today's Life's Biggest Questions, we are going to be looking at what the world might look like if Megalania didn't go extinct. Well, let's start off with a little bit of a breakdown of what Megalania is. I don't expect everyone watching this video to have a detailed knowledge of all prehistoric creatures. Basically, this thing is the oldest known living monitor lizard. These are some massive lizards that we see walking around today. You know, like the Komodo dragon, the big drooling monstrosity that has a type of venom in its jaws. It can bite you, and you'll slowly die over the course of three days. Jesus, that sounds like it came right out of a monster movie. So now that we have a general idea of what this creature looks like, it's a big scary lizard with some massive teeth in its head, but just how big is it? Well, there's a lot of debate on this topic. Like a lot of fossils, it can be hard to determine the exact size of these creatures because it can be hard to find a complete set of fossils. So I will give you a range. Some people think this lizard could have been around three meters long. That's around 10 feet. That's a massive lizard. It would take down Shaq for a snack and it wouldn't even look bloated after it ate him. But other people think that this beast could have been 11 meters long. That's insane. Are you serious? For anyone who uses the imperial system, that clocks in at around 36 feet from head to tail. Just so you guys have a visual, that's about as tall as a telephone pole. And because I like to take things to the extreme on this channel, we're going to say that this thing is as big as the larger number. Now, what did Megalania feed on? Well, back then, animals were much bigger, so it probably had a diet very close to the diet it has now. Hunting down and killing large mammals, or using a classic vulture technique of finding something that is already dead and chowing down. Why go after an animal that can run away when there's perfectly good rotting flesh waiting for you in the sun? I heard the maggots give it an extra kick. It's also thought that Megalania had venom similar to the one that is present in the Komodo dragon. That is terrifying. You have a beast that is as big as a semi-trailer, and it also has jaws that are full of a poisonous toxin. Even though we're in quarantine right now, remember, it could have been much worse. You could have been alive when Megalania was walking around, ripping cows in half with just a look. Now, how does this venom work? Well, for a long time, scientists thought that there was no venom in a Komodo dragon, that it was just the fact that the Komodo dragon had so much bacteria in its mouth from eating rotting flesh and just being an all-around dirty dude that they would bite an animal, the bite would get infected, and the animal would die over the course of three days from the infection. During this time, the Komodo dragon would follow it and wait patiently for the prey to collapse. But it turns out that the Komodo dragon actually does have venom. That venom is a hemotoxin, which stops the animal's blood from clotting. So the Komodo dragon will bite viciously onto this creature, tear open a hole, and it will bleed out. And Megalania had the ability to do the exact same thing. So what would it look like if this creature never went extinct? I mean, some people are probably watching this video and thinking that the world would be a very scary place. These things are almost like dinosaurs walking around. They would be terrorizing everyone, and we would be in a constant battle with them. But personally, I don't think that would be the case. Just like every other predator on the planet, we would most likely dominate them. These ones would maybe take a little bit more technology and a lot more elbow grease, but so far nothing has been able to stand up to the human race and I don't think that these creatures would be any different. I'm confident in saying we would be able to control these beasts because there are some people who believe we might have been the ones who killed them off originally. After the discovery was made that Megalania lived as recently as 50,000 years ago, meaning that there would have been some crossover with humans and Megalania, which sounds like it would have been the worst time to be alive, but not for us, for Megalania, some people speculate that this this creature went extinct because of us. It was big and threatening and a lot of food, and humans back then were very handy at grouping up and killing things. Who am I kidding? We're very handy at doing that right now. So if these things existed now, there would most likely be a few walking around in the wild, but there would be for sure some in cages. Which brings me to the Tiger King theory. If Megalani was still alive right now, there would be a good chance that the documentary Tiger King would have been about a whole different group of people who collect a whole different kind of animal. If Megalani was real, we would see super rich people who own massive plots of land just so they could have one of these things walking around in their backyard. Just like the Tiger King, there would be a massive underground world of people who buy, sell, and trade Megalania. People would take pictures with these massive monsters, they would ride them, they would breed them. The market would be huge and most likely very illegal. My guess is that the people involved would be some of the wealthiest in the world. That's simply because these things would be so much harder to keep as pets, they'd be extremely 
extremely expensive. Forget how much it costs to feed a tiger, these things will probably eat eight tigers a day just to keep going. It would be superstars, famous athletes, and billionaires who get into the Megalania game. Jeff Bezos would have six of these things, and each one would be in a different color. The eggs alone would be worth millions of dollars, and they would probably be the size of a teenager. This means we could see a breakout situation like in Jurassic Park, but with them already running around the world, I don't think it would be too hard to contain that situation if it happened. I would imagine with this creature's size and age that it would most likely be endangered. It would be a struggle for it to find enough food because of its size. And like most other endangered animals, it would most likely be poached. That would be another element to the criminal world surrounding these creatures. Something that seems so deadly would now become a trophy for people to fluff their egos. Whenever there's something big and bad in the world, humans want to master it in every way. It doesn't matter if it's sharks, tigers, rhinos, or anything else, people will want to kill it. Black market trade for Megalania teeth, skin, bones, genitals, and eggs would be crazy. People would make crazy dishes out of all the parts of its bodies, the same way we have shark fin soup. Other people would use the teeth in the way we use rhino horn. Maybe it would be an aphrodisiac or something to give eternal life. All of these would be fake, but people would buy into it. I know that the whole outlook is very bleak, but it's most likely true. For some reason, whenever humans find a big scary creature, they want to own it in every way possible, and I don't think our ancient Komodo dragon friend would be any different. This massive predator who ran the show would now be a commodity to be traded, consumed, and gawked at. On the bright side, this might open the door to scientific communities. Having a beast around that is over a million years old and still walking the earth could unlock so many doors to our planet's history. Maybe through the DNA of this ancient creature, we could develop a whole bunch of new medicines and understand our own genome to a greater level. Maybe we would be able to find a place for these massive reptiles to live in peace and outside of our influence. Oh, and I forgot to mention that these beasts probably would only be in Australia, unless someone snuck one out into another part of the world, which I guess they could do if they had the money, but the bulk of them would be stuck on that continent because that is where they originated from. So that would mean that Australia would have even more terrifying creatures walking around it. Oh god, I would hate to be a kangaroo in the timeline where Megalania was still alive. There would be nowhere you could go to hop and stay safe. Alright everyone, that is all I have for you on today's Life's Biggest Questions. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into our long lost lizard friend. If you have any thoughts on what the world might look like if Megalania didn't go extinct, please hit up the comment section and let me know your thoughts. And don't be afraid to give me the craziest thing you can think of. The more out of this world your ideas are, the better. If you're a Life's Biggest Questions fan, then make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell. Let us know what you would like to see in future episodes, and make sure you check out more content on our page. Until next time, I've been your host, Chade Arena, and I'm here to answer all your questions. Oh,